Hello everybody and welcome to project number three in the Python tutorial series. As you can see on the screen, today we're going to be making an extension of the Rock, Paper, Scissors game with Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock. If you've never heard of Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock, I, I had never heard of it until I was watching an episode of The Big Bang Theory and they made reference to it and it's been in several episodes and essentially it's Rock, Paper, Scissors but it allows the players to choose five different choices instead of just three. So instead of rock, paper, scissors, you can choose rock, paper, scissors, lizard, or Spock. And apparently it wasn't the Big Bang Theory that invented this game. I, I surfed on over to the Wikipedia page, and it was a, invented a long time ago. So apparently this is a real thing. Uh, I also got the idea for this program because... I had always made rock, paper, scissors with students in my programming classes in the past, and a friend of mine took uh, a Python programming class on Coursera, which is a massive online course site. And in the class that he took, they actually developed rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, and I kind of fell in love with the idea because it's a great extension to rock, paper, scissors, and as I said in the Rock, Paper, Scissors introduction, as you add more choices, you can have infinitely more or exponentially more uh, conditions that you have to check for. In this program right here, there's a total of 25 different conditions to check for. That would require 25 different if, elif statements, and that's just a little bit unreasonable. But using the strategies that we developed with Rock, Paper, Scissors, you'll be able to easily calculate the winner of Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock. I also suggest, if you haven't ever done so, there'll, there'll be a link in the description, but YouTube has some great clips of Rock, Paper, Scissors in the Big Bang Theory, so if you've never seen it, they're pretty funny and you should check them out. At any rate, if we scroll down you can see the rules for Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock. It might be a good idea if you're not familiar with the rules of this game, and quite honestly, I don't know of anyone who would know them off the top of your head. Uh, print out this list or write down this list because it will help you while you're developing the game. You can see there's a, a series of interrelationships here on the Wikipedia page that describes how these different objects interact with one another. You know, in Paper, Rock, Scissors, each item loses to one other item and defeats another item. In Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock, you have each object capable of winning against two others and capable against uh, of losing against two others, and of course, the possibility of one tie. This means that there's five relationships for every object. Five times five is 25, so there's a total of 25 possible outcomes instead of three times three with Rock, Paper, Scissors, a total of nine possible outcomes. The rules for rock, paper, scissors in this game remain the exact same. Scissors still cuts paper, paper covers rock, but you've got some additional rules here. Rock crushes lizard, lizard poisons Spock, Spock smashes scissors, scissors decapitate lizard, lizard eats paper, paper disproves Spock, and Spock vaporizes rock. So those are the additional relationships for those objects. Again, if you, if you want to see it in a better presentation, go surf on over and look at the YouTube clips for Rock, for, uh, rock Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock on the Big Bang Theory, because it's much funnier than what I'm able to do in these videos right here. But we can do the, the same thing we did with Rock, Paper, Scissors, assigning each of these numbers to determine a winner. Let's go ahead and open up uh, Paint and take a look at how we would calculate a winner in this more expanded version of Rock, Paper, Scissors. So up on the screen here, I've copied and pasted all of the object relationships with one another from the Wikipedia page that we just looked at. So I've got the rules for Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock over here in the top left-hand corner of the screen. I've also created a five-pointed diagram similar to what we did for Rock, Paper, Scissors and what was posted on the Wikipedia website and we're going to examine how these objects interact with one another before we do any of the modular arithmetic so we can notice some patterns. 
Let's take rock, for example. If I go down the list here, I can see that paper covers rock. So paper is going to defeat rock, and we'll draw a red line there to note that paper is going to cover rock. Rock crushes lizard, so rock will win against a lizard. So let's go ahead and select green. Rock crushes lizard, and draw a green line from the rock to the lizard. Go down here, let's find uh, another rock relationship. Spock vaporizes the rock, so we're going to have a red line drawn from the rock to Spock to symbolize that Spock is going to defeat rock when both are selected. And finally, rock crushes scissors. So I'm going to draw a green line from rock to scissors to symbolize the relationship between rock and scissors. So as we said earlier, rock wins against two items, in this case scissors and lizard, and rock loses against two items, Spock and paper, and is a tie against itself. If we go clockwise from rock, we can see that rock loses to Spock and paper, which are the next two items clockwise, and rock is able to defeat the next two items that are counterclockwise, scissors and lizard. Let's see if this holds up for another object. So let's go ahead and erase all the stuff that we've put on the screen here. And let's assume that the user is going to choose lizard. We're going to go through and find all the lizard relationships that are in our game rules. So rock crushes lizard. We're going to draw a red line to denote that lizard is going to lose to rock. Lizard poisons Spock, so the lizard is going to defeat Spock. So we'll draw a green line from lizard to Spock. The scissors decapitate the lizard, so we're going to have it. Whoops, let me turn that back to green. The scissors decapitate lizard, so let's have a red line from lizard to scissors to note that the scissors decapitate the lizard. And finally, the lizard is going to eat paper. We've got a green line to show that relationship there. Just like we did with rock, we've got four possible outcomes include and, and then a tie. It loses against two items, rock and scissors, and lizard wins against two items, Spock and paper. And the same holds true. If we go clockwise from lizard, lizard is going to lose to the next two objects clockwise, and lizard is going to win against the first two objects counterclockwise. And of course, lizard will tie against itself. In fact, if we go through this entire list of objects, we'll find that that holds true for every single one of them. Every object is able to win against the next two objects counterclockwise, and every object loses to the next two objects that are clockwise from it. Knowing this, we can do some calculations to determine who the winner is going to be without having to have a series of 25 if and elif statements. With knowing those relationships, let's see if we can use our mathematical formula to help determine a winner so that we don't have to do 25 separate if and elif statements. I've cleared my screen and I've put a small Python shell window over on the right so that we can do some calculations in some example scenarios. I'm going to get my text tool open here and do a sample relationship or a sample game between player one and the computer. Player one is going to choose to be paper which has a value of 2. The computer will randomly select Spock, which has a value of 1. Now let's take a look on the left and find the relationship between paper and Spock. I can see over here that paper disproves Spock, so player 1 should be victorious in this setup. The formula that we used in rock, paper, scissors was player 1 score minus computer score in this case giving us a result of 1, and then take that result, use the modulo command, and then enter the number of choices there are available. In rock, paper, scissors we had 3, but in rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock we have 5. And we take 1 mod 5. And over in the Python shell, I can do this math and see that the remainder would be 1. Now let's do a scenario where the computer is going to win. I'm going to have player 1 select rock with a value of 0. 
the computer is going to select paper with a value of 2. Paper covers rock, so the computer should be victorious. Player 1 score minus the computer score equals negative 2, and then negative 2 mod 5, negative 2 mod 5, gives us an answer or a result of 3. In fact, if I, if I do these calculations over and over and over again, I'll notice a pattern. When the result of the mathematical formula that we came up with is a 1 or a 2, player 1 is always the winner. When the result is a 3 or a 4, the computer is always a winner. And when the result is 0, just like in rock, paper, scissors, it's always a tie. If player 1 selects lizard with a value of 3, and the computer selects lizard with a value of 3, we'll have 3 minus 3, which equals 0, and 0 mod 5, which equals 0, showing us that there's a tie. And I can do this with any possible combination. So player 1 chooses Spock with a value of 1, computer chooses lizard with a value of 3. Over on the left I can see that the lizard poisons Spock, so the computer should be the winner in this exchange. So we take the players minus the computer giving a value of negative 2, and then come up here and do negative 2 mod 5, coincidentally the exact same thing that happened with rock and paper, and negative 2 mod 5 has a value of 3. So we've got a scenario here. When you do your calculations and write this, this game, a result of 1, the player wins, a result of 2, the player wins, a result of 3, the computer wins, a result of 4, the computer wins, and a result of 0 is a tie. You can now calculate the winner of every game of Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock, using only 5 if elif statements, or actually only three because you could say if result equals one or result equals two then the player wins l if the result equals three or the result equals four the computer wins and if the result equals zero then it's a tie using this you should be able to adapt your rock paper scissors game to rock paper scissors lizard spock pretty easily and that's what you're going to be doing for project number three so going back to our Python shell here, let's watch the execution of the final Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spot game that you can try to recreate when you write this game. Now, I didn't do a fancy introduction or anything like that, but it would be a nice touch to have maybe the rules of the game printed for the player. But I'm going to go ahead and ask my player to make a selection. I'm going to choose one for Rock. And for each of the five items, I've downloaded some ASCII art that will display when each object is chosen. So I chose rock, I'm prompted to press enter to continue, and the computer chooses Spock. That's going to result in a victory for the computer because the uh, Spock vaporizes rock. My program also keeps track of wins, losses, and tied. So it knows that I've played one game, I've won zero and lost one, no games were tied, and then asks if I want to play again. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to choose scissors this time. See, I've got my art for scissors. The computer is going to choose scissors, and this game is going to result in a tie. I now have played two games of Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock. I've won zero, I've lost one, and one ended in a tie. Would I like to play again? Sure. Let's go ahead and choose paper. Computer chooses Spock. Paper is going to discredit Spock. So player one is the winner of the game. I've played three games. I've won one, lost one, and tied one. And I now know that my program is adequately keeping track of all the stuff. Do I want to press play again? Yep. I'm going to choose Lizard. The computer chooses Spock. 
Lizard Poison Spock, so player one is the winner. I've now won two, lost one, and tied one. And the game will continue until I press no that I don't want to continue again. That's what you're going for in your final Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard Spock game. Now another thing that you could do that might make it um, a little bit more interesting and in addition to just adding the introduction is you might want to make a selection that will display the relationships between all the objects because your player might not know that as well so you might want some kind of help screen integrated into your game. But when you're done you should have a completely working and functioning copy of Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock. If you're having trouble developing the game, go back and look at the Rock, Paper, Scissors development because it's very similar to what you're doing for Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock. You're simply changing some of the mathematical calculations and changing the number of options available, available to be chosen. As always, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments and I'll help you out any way that I can. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.